Mabuhay! Kumusta? I'm Albine. Welcome to my channel, Life with Albine. How are you doing? I hope you are doing fine. Nag-subscribe ka na ba? Kung hindi pa, feel free to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button so you get notified when a new video is uploaded. I teach Tagalog. Tagalog is the language widely spoken in the Philippines. If you've been following me for a while now, maybe you know that me, my husband, and my stepson has just visited the Philippines recently. And so, I'd like to talk about my hometown, Marinduque. Marinduque is one of the provinces part of Tagalog region in the south. It is a small heart-shaped island, lies in Tayabas Bay to the north and Sibuyan Sea to the south. It is west of Bondok Peninsula of Quezon Province, east of Mindoro Island, and north of the island province of Romblon. I'd like to tell you that Marinduque is one of the most peaceful provinces in the Philippines because of its low crime rate statistics. Marinduque is a popular destination during Holy Week because of Moriones Festival. Moriones Festival has been observed for almost 200 years now and so it is considered to be one of the oldest religious festivals in the country. Interestingly, it is considered as the geographical center of the Philippine archipelago based on Luzon Datum of 1911. Luzon Datum of 1911 was the basis of the first modern survey of the Philippine Islands. Well, those are the facts about my hometown. And now, let's proceed to my own creation. It was my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And that was the first reason why we flew from the USA to the Philippines. The second big reason was that we wanted a winterscape vacation. My parents' house lies along the provincial road, the island's largest thoroughfare but circumferential, connecting all the six towns in the island. I can brag about the views we get from the windows of the house. From the south side, we get the ocean view. And then, from the north, we see the mountains. It used to be a simple Bahay Kubo, made up of natural materials, bamboo floor, dried kogon grass for the roof, and carefully picked thin lumber for the walls. Just like common villagers' shelter in the middle of rice paddies, the house can be lifted by a bunch of people who willingly perform bayanihan in order to move it from one place to another. That was our old house when I was a kid, until I turned 30. Although, I didn't stay with them when I turned 17, because I had to move to Manila to get into a university. The Fox House only became my vacation place during school breaks and holidays. Later on, my parents built 
a larger house in the same property lot, a two-story concrete house to withstand the storms because they are often hit as the Philippines gets average of 30 typhoons per year. Nature is indeed around us. Neighborhood is lush green, but people find their way to adorn their houses with bougainvillea, hibiscus, orchids, or birds of paradise. Out in the vacant lots, there still exist vines of Cadena de Amor. Few villages can be covered with towering coconut trees. I love trekking, so I can't go back to Flatland, Ohio without visiting at least one hill. I wanted to get to higher elevation and gaze upon beautiful landscape of land next to a blue sea with admiration. A pair of flip-flops is a friend. I can take few steps towards the beach. It's only 150 meters away from the property backyard. When I got there, and suppose that I'm facing the water, Mount Malintig stands to my left, as if that any moment soon, the Malindig Ferry will sail her sparkling golden boat full of rice and farm produce, as folk tales say. Still facing the water and at my two o'clock position, I can see Gaspar Island floating on water like a huge boat sailing towards me and mysteriously leading a convoy of few boats in parade. As a kid, I heard old people said that villagers believed it to be started out as ships owned by Lady Malindig, cursed, caught by storm, and then forever remained still as the islands we now see. I see only Gaspar Island from here because it covers two other smaller ones, Melchor and Baltasar behind it. If I stroll along the circumferential road towards west, I get the view of all those three islands anyway. The sea is always calm, quiet, and most of all, clean. Fishing is the most chosen occupation for residents, especially those who settled next to the shorelines. I can choose to wait for the fishermen in the afternoon and see what they caught, how plenty, and if we're lucky, they'd sell me a kilo at a lower price. Anyone can get fresh seafood each day except for monsoon season that brings prevailing wind, which causes rough sea that's unsafe to fishermen sailing on a small pump boat. Life in my hometown is still a mediocre. Most families live like isang kahig isang tuka, which means they work 
because they need to have food on the table. But other expenditures can be hardly paid for. Some guys love to own some roosters. It's become their source of entertainment through cockfighting, as others do business because of it. On the other hand, some household own at least one pig. I'm talking about backyard pig. They feed it at least twice a day with grated coconut, taro, and rice husks. They invest on it so they can sell the pig later. Others keep a pig or two ahead of time for certain occasion like fiesta or birthday or anniversary. Natives love throwing out a big party and so piggy can either be a lechon, dinuguan or menudo. I hope you see the juxtaposition of two opposite scenarios we can get. Most families are poor, but they don't usually cry nor complain. We laugh at jokes most of the time, even on times of calamities. Support group is only in the neighborhood, but there's always a reason to be thankful for. Family is the greatest treasure we have got. I have high regards to parents who send their children to school despite of their low income status. Likewise, I commend those children going to school every day despite of lack of household convenience. For example, no water distribution system through pipes, no shower above their heads, but still they bathe themselves every day. One tabo and a bucket full of water, then they are fine in the bathroom. In this island, it's where young ones build their dreams. Many pursue their education or training on certain skills. Not all, but many dreamers want to get out of here. Some want to achieve their ambitions either in the big cities or in abroad. Others return eventually, after they've saved up some money and started their own small business. I can see that commerce is alive and thriving here, which is a good thing. Marine Duque is very promising to tourism industry. This is my confession to you. I'm afraid of corporate tourism coming in my hometown. I don't want it to be a party place. I'm worried about the influx of tourists, the amount of garbage, literal or figurative garbage it would bring, and the inaccessibility of beach fronts to local residents. But this is just me. If it's bound to happen, it could happen. However, I appreciate the increasing business establishments here. Not all thrive through the years, but it's obvious to me that it is catching up with recent day's trends and the potential of this island to be prosperous is evident. Hey, I'm 
glad that you are still there. If you like this video, feel free to hit the like button and share to your family and friends. What do you think of the photos? Those were taken by my good husband, Bruce Bodo, and few of those I grabbed from my cousins, Marlon S. Ben and Darrell Sapungan. I appreciate reading your comments, suggestions, and reactions. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to connect with me. Please find the link to my social media account in the description. I'll see you on Instagram. I'll see you on Facebook group Tagalog with Albine. I'll see you on my live tutorials. And also, please watch my other videos here on YouTube. Maraming salamat po! I'm sending love your way. Magkita tayong muli. I'll see you again.